This is World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with your host, Carl Gruber. World Awakenings is a podcast dedicated to opening your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to all things spiritual, metaphysical, and enlightening, and just how they play an all-important role in our daily life. So join Carl on this enlightening experience as he interviews metaphysical and spiritual experts to discuss, debate, and delve deeply into the hows and whys of this worldwide awakening. You've seen and read my Three Pillars ebook, and now I'm proud to announce my new book, True Spirituality and the Law of Attraction, a beautiful symbiotic relationship. And it's now out and ready for reading. This new book of mine is a full-length version of the teachings of the Three Pillars, and in it I show you how to walk in the integrity of eternal universal laws, in step with the Law of Attraction to consistently create the life you desire. Now, if you've ever wondered just why you can't consistently manifest all the good, loving, abundant, healthy, and happy things you desire, my new book, True Spirituality and the Law of Attraction will reveal the key in how to do just that. Plus, help you build a rock-solid personal foundation that will stand strong for the ages. Get your copy today, my new book, True Spirituality and the Law of Attraction, a beautiful symbiotic relationship by Carl Gruber. Available now in ebook and paperback on Amazon.com. Hey everyone, welcome and thank you for joining me here for yet another episode of my podcast, World Awakenings, The Fast Track to Enlightenment. I'm going to be brief here as I am super excited about introducing our special guest on today's show. As always, I ask that you please subscribe to this channel and also please click the link below to get my brand new book, True Spirituality and the Law of Attraction, A Beautiful Symbiotic Relationship. And thank you. Well, our special guest today for this show is Eileen Day McCusick, a pioneer in the fields of human biofield, therapeutic sound, and electric health. A researcher, author, inventor, educator, speaker, and practitioner, Eileen has been researching health since 1987 and since 1996, specifically how sound impacts health. Now, she's the originator of the sound therapy method Biofield Tuning with thousands of students trained worldwide since 2010 and the founder of the Biofield Tuning Institute, author also of the award-winning best-selling book Tuning the Human Biofield, Healing with Vibrational Sound Therapy, as well as her recently released Electric Body, Electric Health, which has book testimonials written by some of the icons of the new thought era like Tony Robbins, Jack Kent. Canfield, Mar- Marcy Shimoff, and more. And Eileen is also the inventor of the revolutionary and much loved tool, the Sonic Slider, the creator of a line of tuning forks and accessories. So, oh man, I am so excited. Thank you, Eileen, for being on World Awakenings. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. My pleasure, Carl. This is just great. And, you know, we were just talking uh, uh, off camera a little bit here, but I- I'm going to mention to the people that you and I, um, how we've kind of connected here is we have a um, a mutual acquaintance, uh, Brendan D. Murphy, a young, brilliant author out of Sydney, Australia, now living in Mexico, of a book called uh, The Grand Illusion, A Synthesis of Science and Spirituality, which is a gargantuan treatise on, on that topic, uh, really super well um uh, well researched, and I've had Brendan on one of my very first shows uh, um, four years ago. Yeah, as a matter of fact, and I saw uh, you on Brendan's um, show. How did you originally meet him? Was it just simply from your reading the book too? Well, I was doing research for my first book, Tuning the Human Biofield, and I was researching ether, and I came across an article that Brendan had written 
on Ether. And it was a brilliant article. And I actually ended up reaching out to him because I because I was so impressed with the article. <clears throat> and uh, and then I learned that he had his book, The Grand Illusion. So this was 2011 or 2012 is a, a ways back. And when I when I read Brennan's book, now he wrote that when he was 24. He never know, was college. Me. <laughs> and it is a brilliant, brilliant book. And Brendan and I actually became friends. We sort of became pen pals through Facebook Messenger, I think. And I did my very first distance session that wasn't in the United States <laughs> on Brendan as an experiment because he was on the other side of the world. And then yeah. we started doing other things because we discovered we were very much of the same mind. So we started doing this experiment where we would take an image in our mind and we'd put it in the ether and then have the other person like pick it up and figure out what it was. And so I remember Brendan put a guitar pick into the ether just with his mind. And I tuned into it and I'm like, it's like a Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we have learned a lot from each other and just appreciated each other's perspective on things because like Brendan kind of has a, a big picture view on life, the universe and everything. So do I, and there's not a lot of really big picture kind of cosmological thinkers out there. So when you find a kin, you know, you definitely appreciate them. Well, it's not often I start off a, a show introduction to my guests talking about another person, <laughs> but Brendan, yeah, absolutely amazing. And I know he he speaks a lot about in his book about non-local communication, which is exactly what you were talking about. But excuse me, let's uh, check in with uh, Eileen. Let's find out a bit about the young Eileen, because I was reading a little bit of your uh uh, electric health book in in your journey to where you are today as a teacher of biofield tuning but you, you had an interesting youth and, and you, you became a cafe owner pretty young too right i did i i opened my first business with my family when i was 20 years old a cafe called the vanilla bean cafe in a town called pomfort connecticut and uh, but you know at the time i i had already when i was 18 i started researching health and human potential and you know since 1987 i've been a voracious student learning everything i can about how to be healthy on every level physically mentally emotionally spiritually relationally financially all of that you know all the things that uh, like tony robbins or you know or jack canfield like what, what are we doing we're trying to figure out a better easier way we're trying to make sense of the human experience and uh and optimize ourselves and then in the process help others to do the same there's a lot of people really struggling with a lot of dysregulation from trauma inputs and difficulty addiction all kinds of stuff really looking for help looking for something that's really going to help stabilize them regulate them allow them to relax and to expand into their potential and i was certainly one of those people i spent a lot of time and money and energy uh, trying to figure it out, you know, how to master the game, how to master my body, how to master my relationship with food um, and and how to really enjoy life, you know, which is not the easiest thing to do. Right. And if we can stay healthy, obviously, the quality of and the longevity of our life is more enjoyable and happy. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? But from what I saw, you, you had a, a bit of a struggle when you were, were a youngster overcoming uh, and with your marriage and things. And once you you stumbled upon uh, tuning force and things, things started turning around. Right. You, I think you cured planter warts on your bottom of your foot and everything with it? Well, I cared a lot. You know, I, I suffered, even though I spent decades reading books and, you know, getting CD sets from Nightingale Conan, <laughs> like really, you know, doing the things. Uh, back in 2010, I would say I was still, I was broke. I was in debt. I was in constant low level mid back pain. I had miserable digestion gas, bloating, heartburn, indigestion, stomach aches. I mean, it was really misery. Um, and when you when your stomach doesn't feel good, you know, there's a reason why we use the term belly aching, right? And belly aching and like, oh, you know, my husband, my kids, my men. And I was like, I was kind of a mess. And I was also an overworker. At that time, I was going to school full time. I was seeing clients. And then I started teaching biofield tuning as well. And I was a mom. Uh, 
And I started teaching in 2010. Now I started practicing with Tuning Forks in 1996. And mm -hmm. between 1996 and 2010, I developed a method, which I didn't set out to do, but it just sort of developed itself. And the method that I call biofield tuning, uh, I discovered was really helpful for people. Just what we were talking about, about how people are looking for something that regulates them. Uh, I discovered that, that this approach that I was doing, not just on and over the body, but in the atmosphere around the body. When I started working in the atmosphere around the body with just pure tones, my therapeutic outcomes became really, really dramatic. And people were getting out of pain, out of anxiety, getting unstuck, becoming more creative. And I realized that I kind of had a moral obligation to bring this into the world. But at the same time, you know, even in 2010, it's very different now. Certainly in 1996, when I started, it was just, I encountered a tremendous amount of skepticism, cynicism, snide pushback, because it just, there's something about tuning forks for healing. It just sounds really fruity. It sounds really airy fairy. And so when I realized that I needed to bring it to the world, I decided that I should get some degrees to make it appear less mm -hmm. free. And fortunately, there was a Vermont State College five minutes down the road from my house. And I went to that as an adult and I got my undergraduate and graduate degrees in five years. And then I wrote a master's thesis called Exploring the Effects of Audible Sound on the Human Body and its Biofield. So I learned to understand what the phenomena was that I was working with from an academic and scientific perspective. And then that became the basis for tuning the human biofield. So and that, no, well, go ahead. Finish your, I want to I finish answering your question. Yeah. So, um, so in 2010, when I was working on my master's in education, I had a group of friends and clients who bullied me into yeah. teaching them a class. I wanted to wait till I had my master's degree, but they would not, you know, they were like, teach us now. I wasn't even sure I could teach it, but I discovered working with this class, my first students that I could. And for the first time in 14 years, I actually received the work because mm. I've been helping people, you know, all these years and I was only doing it part time. I still own a restaurant, I own a specialty food business. I didn't want to be a healer as a vocation because I just I'm not really a healer. I'm a scientist. I'm in like an efficiency expert. I'm always looking for like the shortest, easiest, most efficient way to do things. And I got into health for my own reasons to help my own health, not because I want to minister to the masses as a healer like that was never my jam. Um, so <laughs> so when I started two things happened in 2010. One was that I got introduced to plasma, the fourth state of matter. And mm -hmm. I realized that our body had an electrical system. And this is something that's hidden from us. We're not taught about our body's electrical system. We see the parts and pieces we get. Okay, brain waves are electric, heartbeat are electric, blood carries a charge. We see the, 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 we see the forest, we see the trees, right? We don't see the forest. And the forest is, is that you have a circulating electrical system. You have a lyric electric current running through you, you have a magnetic field around you. They're one and the same. And that's just a basic biological thing. You know, anything that has an electric current running through it has a magnetic field around it. And I came to see that what we call chi, what we call the aura, what we call the human energy field, we call the biofield, it's all the body's electrical system. And I'm not the first person to name it the electrical system. The fellow who wrote the body electric, Robert O. Becker, um, also wrote a book called Cross Currents back in the 80s, the early 80s, and he talks about the body's electrical system. But, you know, basically the powers that be, the AMA sponsored medical system, that's not their wheelhouse. So it's really suppressed and obscured. And this idea of energy medicine is made like taboo somehow and unexplainable when really it's just electric flow. It was so simple. I can't believe we've been we've been shanghaied for so long to not get it. To, you know, like, what's the energy and energy medicine? It's taboo. It's freaking electricity, guys. That's what it is. It's current. I'm like, let's just get over this and start to understand it better. Like, what I'm just poking around in it with my team force in this really primitive way and having these miraculous outcomes with people and myself. So when I started getting tuned, you know, all of the like, oh, I want to be fit and I want to be abundant and I want to be this and I'm not getting there. It was all trapped 
emotions that were stuck in my body and my field that I was dragging around like a ball and chain. And we all have these. We absolutely all, because we've never been given permission to express. Everything in our culture is suppress, suppress, suppress. I mean, even meditation is like, sit down and shut up, <laughs> right? Oh, this is your solution to like carrying around all this sound and unexpressed stuff and you sit down and shut up. Great, that's not helpful for many, many people. Like it can be in small doses in the right way, supplemented with expression. So this is what I discovered was that I had mountains of tears and mountains of anger and all kinds of buried shame and like chaos and, you know, bad inputs. Like I grew up the youngest of six kids and there's six years between myself and the one that's closest to me. This is five siblings, six to 12 years older than me. You know, and just normal kid roughhousing, being tickled, being come after with the claw, <laughs> but it was chronic and it was every single day of my childhood, I was on guard about who was coming after me with a rat tail to smack me with it next. <laughs> and, and when I would try to express to my parents that I was being bullied, they were like, you know, I'll oh, just let it roll off you like your sister. <laughs> like You're too sensitive. I was always told that I was too sensitive. And so I just learned to shut up and to like stuff it all. And then I became addicted to sugar because I found that sugar is a great way to numb out your feelings. And so I spent a lot of time battling with a sugar addiction, food addiction, like all kinds of struggles, right? But tuning and, and being tuned helped me to digest and integrate and liberate the energy that had been stuck in those suppressed emotions. And a lot of tears were shed and a lot of stuff. But, but what this work does is it lightens you up and it increases every heavy stuck thing you have is sequestering voltage and is bringing you down and when you start to kind of liberate that stuck energy in the electrical system it's resistance in the electrical system that is sequestering voltage and so when it's released or relaxed from resistance and liberated into flow your voltage goes up your battery meter goes up your light goes up your energy goes up your focus goes up and your body solves all its own problems so now i'm i'm not in debt i'm not broke i don't fight with my husband nearly as much as i still do occasionally um, <laughs> i don't have any health issues i can eat anything uh with gusto and happily digest it and this has all been through understanding and working successfully with my body's electrical system well i like that sit down and shut up <laughs> <laughs> well um it, it's interesting that that you talk about um you were healed as you did uh your sound healing uh because I'm the facilitator of a Power of Eight Facebook group. This is based on Lynn McTaggart's study of, of that eight or more people come together and focus their healing intentions. And one of the, the well-known things is that the healing intenders have a rebound effect. And, and they, too, are healed, even though they're focusing on a person, place, or a particular person, place, or thing. And, and I, I really like that fact that, you know, it goes back to the classic line, as you give, you receive. But, mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, because when you give, you're, it, you're in it, <laughs> right? You're in it. And especially when you do it in a group, then you're all in it together, which amplifies it. Mm -hmm. And you just, you become more consonant, harmonic, resonant, present. Right. And so and it's amplified in in numbers where really wherever two or more of you are gathered, like eight's a great number. <laughs> yeah. Right. But two also works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all I can say is your passion overfloweth. I love it. You, you're this is definitely your wheelhouse. Um, I would like to to uh, talk a little bit more about the biofield itself. So the biofield is actually an electromagnetic um field, I believe, uh, generally extends up to six feet around us. And what I read, um, what I got to read of your Electric Health uh, new book is that um, this field is almost like the holder of our Akashic records, right? Yeah, so that's what I discovered, but totally by accident. <laughs> I was just moving a fork through the atmosphere around the body. And over the course of a number of years, I discovered a pattern 
you know, just like our digestive organs are all in a particular pattern, yours are pretty much the same as mine. I discovered that the magnetic field of our body has standing waves that are encoded with the vibrational information of our memories. You know, and if you think about it, you know, we're told that that memories in our brain, that's what we're told, they might also be there. But if you everything that we that we think, that we feel, that we speak, that we smell, that we see, that we take everything that we experience as humans is translated into an electrical impulse in the body. So it makes sense that all of our memories are stored in our body's electrical system. We all know that the memories are there, right? Mm -hmm. So what I found was that the memories, you know, and this is a hypothesis, but what, what emerged is something that I call the biofield anatomy map. And, and thousands of students have been trained uh, with this map and learned how to do biofield tuning, gone out, worked on their first practice bodies, and by following the map, been able to identify major traumas in people's lives, the age that they happen, what was involved, because it appears to be consistent from person to person. Basically, you're, in this model, your biofield is your mind, it's your conscious mind, it's your subconscious mind. And I would even go so far as to say that it's your soul, that your electrical system is your soul. Because when you're alive, your light is on, and when you die, your light goes out. Well, where does it go? I mean, some people see light actually leaving people's bodies when they die. And I think it's in Brendan's book that they weighed, somebody weighed people, a whole bunch of people before and after they died and people lose a little bit of weight. And I have discovered that the electrical system does have mass. You know, when you move, when you make a big adjustment in somebody's electrical system, like proprioceptors take a little while to figure it out there. When I'm working in the field and I find resistance, there's charge there. There's a, a there's mass. So and it would make sense. It would explain, you know, people old souls, because if this light, if this bubble, if this torus of of light is you, then it's going to contain, like you said, the Akashic record of every lifetime you've ever lived, including this one. Wow. Wow. That, you know, I could see why when you first started this, that it was so hard for people to accept what you were doing and then just calling it woo woo. Um, because, you know, we are so engrossed in the egoic thinking, well, we're just a body. And, and and when you tell people, well, that bullying uh, session you had when you were six is out here. It's three feet sitting out here. And, and you know, people, because if they can't see it, they don't believe it. Right. When it turns out, and, you know, I'm being a um, uh, I'm a law of attraction life coach. I'm a teacher of that. And one of the first things we learn is everything is energy. To me, this makes complete sense. Yeah. I mean, we're waves in space. You know, <laughs> that's what we are. And uh, and every input and response we've ever had is patterned in us. It's, and, you know, whether we can see it or not, everybody feels it. Everybody mm -hmm. feels attraction, repulsion, resonance or dissonance. Everybody feels that. You can feel it from across the room. You can have a moment of attraction from across the room. Their pheromones aren't making it to your your nose. You're feeling their vibe your eyes are, your field is, we all, all of nature responds to vibes. You know, humans have become very verbal and we put words on everything, but everything we feel is fundamentally a waveform of a particular shape. And so whenever you have strong feelings, you're making big waves in your electrical system. When you go through a trauma, like I have a friend right now, who's going through uh, a beloved family dog that's only eight years old, has cancer, or has to be put down. And she got a kidney stone in the middle of it all. And so that's making some, you know, this is gonna, she's gonna look back in this time in her life and be like, this is so stressful, it was so hard. Well, when I'm reading her record uh, of, in, you know, combing a fork through this magnetic field, the fork resonates with the information that's present. So I'm able, you know, so so a time in a person's life when they're making big upset waves, the tuning fork passes through that memory, it reflects that, it makes those waves. And what's so wild is like every emotion that we feel makes a particular sound in the forks, like mm -hmm. sadness, 
Like I'll never forget, I worked with this woman whose son had committed suicide or 18 year old son had committed suicide six months before. And whenever we feel sad, that pattern gets laid down off of our left shoulder. And I had a fork. And, and as we generate information, it moves away from us. Whatever we're feeling now or currently is close to the body. And then it moves away like hair, how hair grows away. As we generate that information, it moves away from us. So even though kids Kids, their field is about six feet. They have a lot less data on the hard drive. But somebody who's 80 has filled up, you know, that hard drive with all of the information of that life. So it just becomes more compacted, which is why it's harder for older people to retrieve memories because there's so much data to sift through. Whereas kids, it's there's not a lot. And so, but it's all occupying the same amount of space, which is I find really interesting. Um, so. Uh oh, now I forgot what the question was. <laughs> well, well, actually, I mean, you gosh, I, you, you've already answered like five of the questions I have written down to ask you, but um, let's discuss more exactly how a tuning fork works. Now, I know you have developed something called the sonic slider tuning fork, and I'm guessing what you can change frequencies, and, and the frequencies are able to move these, these, um, um, the biofield energies around to 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 heal itself well the way the tuning forks work in a number of ways so one of the ways that they work is they work as a mirror as a biofeedback device so i'm combing through your field we hit a patch of resistance and distortion it's pretty significant you can hear it i can hear it my fork is stuck it's not moving mm -hmm. so the tuning fork is resonating with the distortion that difficult memory that's present and it's mirroring it back to your body so if you haven't looked in the mirror in a while and you suddenly do you see your hair is a mess and you have a poppy seed in your teeth what's <laughs> your first response right it's to straighten yourself out it's to groom yourself get rid of you know what i mean groom yourself mm -hmm. our Electrical system is the exact same. As soon as you reflect back to it that it's out of order, it immediately uses that mirror, that reflection to start putting itself in order so that it's hearing itself as, you know, it's good. It's buttoned up. It's sharp. That's the way we want our body wants to be. That's the state of health. So what will happen is that as the body keeps hearing this reflection, you keep activating the fork, introducing it there, whatever tension, whatever subconscious torsion we've got in our electrical system that's holding that there starts to relax and to release. And all of a sudden we might just feel ourselves like drop into a new level of relaxation, a big breath might come. And then all of a sudden that resistance that I was stuck in is not there anymore. It just let go. So it's acting as a metronome. So we might come along and find something else like that feels anxious or racy, right? It's going on, your adrenals are going off. So your rhythm, when your adrenals, when you go into adrenal burnout, you know, if you go see a naturopath, they're gonna push hundreds of dollars of supplements across the counter at you, right? And say, take 18 pills a day. Well, I usually do that for about three days and then I forget all about it. <laughs> I just like, I'm not good at taking pills. Um, so I don't really <laughs> for the most part, but, uh, but in biofield tuning, we're going to work with the rhythm of your adrenals because they're all like, ah, <laughs> and so this metronome effect that the tuning fork is just producing a steady coherent rhythm. And then the body's like, wow, my rhythm's really off. I'm running too high and too fast. So that metronome aspect allows the body to find its right rhythm. We're really, we're rhythmal, we're rhythmic, we're tonal, right? Mm -hmm. We're instruments, we're either in tune or we're out of tune. And, and then lastly, it works like a magnet. So a vibrating tuning fork in my hand produces a weak electromagnetic charge that makes it like a magnetic stylus. And you look at this energy in your field that's stuck here, stuck in the body and resistance as a, as a magnet. And you can actually use the fork to manipulate the magnetism in the field. Now, magnetic fields guide and inform electric currents. So if you have a lot of pain in your shoulder, you have too much electricity running through the wires. There's going to be a corresponding density in the magnetic field as well. 
So what I do is I come in, I work with the fact that it's too sharp and it's kind of freaking out, get it to settle down and release. And then I'm going to guide the magnetic field back to center, which is going to draw that electric current back into the central system and flow. So I've been able to take people down from very high on the pain scale down to like a one or a zero in 15 minutes simply by modulating the magnetic field, which then shifts the electricity. I I just, I think yesterday I watched a YouTube video you posted just a few days ago during the Lionsgate portal. And it was interesting because I think you're using a 144 uh, hertz um, tuning fork and, and you hit it a few times and right away you could tell it brought up nauseousness and it even caused you to burp at one point. <laughs> yeah, because my body becomes a fork too when I work. I get all kinds of information, not just through my ears and what I'm hearing, but what I'm feeling in my own body, what my breath is doing, where I'm contracting, where I'm expanding. So whether I'm working with an individual or a group, I'm continually getting information from how I feel. And sometimes it's very uncomfortable, to be honest, but it always passes. Yeah, and I recently, uh, well, well, actually a couple of years ago, I read, um, again, going back to Lynn McTaggart, her book, uh, The Intention Experiment, she actually talks about when you hit one tuning fork and there's another tuning fork uh, nearby, they both start resonating at the same frequency. So that makes sense when you're talking about how you can adjust uh, a person's um, electromagnetic field simply through doing it. Do you have to hit the tuning fork multiple times in order to, to get them in the resonance with each other? Yeah, I mean, it does, it does take time. It depends on how old the person is, how long ago the memory was, how severe uh, the input was, what the duration of the input was. You know, everybody's different. It depends on the time of day, what they've eaten. <laughs> There's so many different factors uh, about how the the forks get the body to shift you know sometimes i'll be going through somebody's field let's say they're 60 i get to be somewhere around 30 i mean hmm, this feels sort of like a divorce it feels fairly rancorous there's a lot of discomfort and anger and they'll say to me i thought i already worked through that you know i've been to therapy and done this i've already worked through that and i said well the, i'm reading the record as it was laid down i'm not reading your perspective on that memory in this moment, I'm reading what your body was generating at that time. Now, if somebody's already done a lot of work around it, then that's gonna resolve a lot faster than if they just closed the door and never looked at it and it's been festering all this time without contemplation and conversation, right? So, so some things will resolve quickly if people are like, oh yeah, that, like, that's good. And then the body's like, yeah, boom, that's good. <laughs> and it'll just keep going. Well, tell us more about this sonic slider. Why did you develop it and how does it work? Sure, let me just grab one. Okay. So, so to be perfectly honest, I developed it completely uh, from vanity, actually. Uh, that uh, years ago, I was in the car, my kids were little, and I think that they were like maybe, I don't know, nine and, and 12. And one of them said to me, hey, mom, you're starting to look old. And the other one said, yeah, mom, with all you do, you should have figured out how to not look old. <laughs> I was like, challenge accepted. And I started fooling around back then with what could be done with the forks in order to rejuvenate us. Mm -hmm. And uh, but at the time I was also working on my master's degree, I had little kids and and I just decided that I w it wasn't worth it. You know, I was like, I don't care. Uh, so I kind of let the research go. But then as I got older, I think maybe seven or eight years later, I decided to revisit it. Mm -hmm. And what I was looking for was a fork, a vibration that was universally appealing, that was relaxing, that was restful, that was rejuvenating. Now, over the years, I've had many different prototypes of forks made just out of my own curiosity. I had a whole set based in sacred geometry created. Uh, I've worked with a whole bunch of different sets. And then as my curiosity arises, you know, I'll just have a particular frequency made. And so with this one, I worked um, with the Schumann resonance, the overtones of the Schumann resonance and some different sacred geometry numbers. I got, I think, <clears throat> six different prototypes. 
And I knew the moment that I got this one, and this one is 93.96 hertz. It's the Schumann resonance, 7.83 times 12. You can't make a Schumann resonance fork. You can't make a fork that's eight hertz or low. You know, the lowest one you can get is about 26. Eight hertz would be about four feet long. So that's just <laughs> not an option. But you can take that background electrical pulse that's going on in our electrical environment that's on average 7.83 hertz and embed it in a, a harmonic of it, which is what mm -hmm. this is. And so I knew that the moment that I activated this fork and I put it on me, I'm like, this is the one. Like, this just feels good. Now, I also have the 11th and 13th harmonics made, and they both feel terrible, terrible, like horrible. <laughs> and what's interesting is that I had this made in an unweighted fork to hear it, and it sounds horrible. <laughs> so you just never really know what you're going to end up with. Mm -hmm. uh, but so this this one is, you know, everybody loves it. Like anybody who gets a sonic slider and starts using it, like if I had a nickel for every time I heard somebody say, I love my sonic slider, and <laughs> I have a big pile of nickels because it's just makes you feel good. So I I created it to use on the face, to to basically like iron the face. Hmm. Um, because I'm a frowner and a squinter, you know, I'm always like rawr. And so I was really starting to look like Clint Eastwood. I was like, oh, that's not a look I really want. <laughs> so, you know, I figured out like how to use this, um, you know, in a bit, and, and it worked because within just a little while of using it, I was showing up in Zoom meetings and people were like, Eileen, what did you do to your face? And I was like, haha, yeah. it's working. <laughs> and so then I got a test group of people, sent it out to a whole bunch of people, had them do it, looked at their before and afters, like really amazing results of this first test group. And so we put it, we started marketing it uh, in our store. But then after using it on my face for a few months, I decided to see what happened if I used it on my body. And I started, so this is a long, it has an extra long handle. And so what you do is you activate it, kind of hold it like a pencil and then slide it sort of like dry brushing where you just sort of slide with pressure, um, you know, cover every square inch of your body that you can with firm pressure towards the heart. And within just five weeks of doing that, I shrunk very dramatically. Um, <laughs> It was very strange. I went from having a wardrobe full of size medium clothes to having to go out and get a whole new wardrobe of extra small clothes because I just went whoop. And wow. now I'm an outlier. Okay. I really wish that everyone could have that experience, but not everybody does. Uh, a lot of the weight that we carry is emotional tension. And I'd had years of tuning to release that emotional tension. But what I discovered was the case with me was being in childhood and always being in a state of contraction, contraction, contraction. I was just thinking today about when I was six, my 18 year old brother, and I remember this very vividly, used to give me camel bites and he would come up and grab the top of my knee and squeeze it as hard as he could and, and get this demonic look on his face, right? And I was just like, no wonder why I have all of this going on. When I like, who does that? What 18 year old guy does that to their six year old sister? You still I still talk to him. <laughs> you, but I think that I need to have a conversation about it. Because, you know, unfortunately, when I started dating my husband, he'd go to put my his hand on my knee and I'd just karate chop him and he'd be like, what? What did I do? <laughs> I was like so patterned to just to defend myself if anyone got near my knee. So, so all of that contraction made my fascia bunch up. And I had all of these knots in my fascia that were inhibiting proper fluid flow. I didn't overeat. I just was holding a lot of fluid due to all these knots. And when I started using the sonic slider firmly, I came out in all of these bruises, but all of this fluid let go. Really? Yeah. So, you know, so if other people have that same kind of story as me, you're more likely to have a change in your body, but it also adds tone to muscles, which, mm -hmm. you know, you think about it. I mean, what is a tone and you're putting tone in your muscles, you're adding tone. And so it can like help get rid of bat wings. The thing is, is you have to do it every day. Like this is the thing with this. It's like you can't just do it a couple times a week and think it's going to make a difference. It's really like a daily practice, but it only takes a few minutes. Like it doesn't take a lot of time to go through your whole body. 
So this is kind of what we put it out in the market for, but many people discovered all kinds of other uses for it as well. I've gotten pictures of people, have, oh, this mole started to get dark and weird. And so I started using the sonic slider on it every day. And here's a picture of it vanishing. Or I get migraines and I figured out that if I do this on my head, it stops the migraines. Or I had food allergies and I started using it regularly on my liver and my kidneys and my digestive organs. And now I'm not bothered by them. Um, so there's, it's just a good vibe that the body likes. It adds coherence, it adds rhythm, it adds tone, and it's an opportunity for you to also use affirmations and really embed them vibrationally into your body. I love my strong, healthy body or whatever you want to do. It's just an opportunity for self-care, for self-love and a good input. Um, and it can also be used in the field. So even though, you know, the sonic slider is mostly an on body thing, just like I use unweighted forks to comb through the field and read what's present, a weighted fork can also be used that way. If you move slowly through the field with a vibrating weighted fork, you'll hit places where it gets stuck. It feels wonky. It's vibrating weird in your fingers. Mm -hmm. And if you just hang out in those places. The body uses that vibrational input. It doesn't need to hear it. It feels it. And it'll it will regulate it will relax so it's a super useful tool you know for really all kinds of things this this is just some phenomenal phenomenal information and and i'm sure people watching and listening to this are gaining a lot of hope just hearing you say these things um very interesting and i would like to ask how how does um what you're doing biofield tuning work at the distance. I know you can do that like over a Zoom call. How does that work? Yeah, it sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? When I, you know, people asked me years ago, they would say, can you do this at a distance? And I always feel like, no, like what a dumb question. Like this Until is you did waves it. on the body. I was like, this is physics people. Like it's not happening at a distance, you know? And sometimes I can be really arrogant and snide. And I definitely was <laughs> in that case. Uh, but then, my my first book, Tuning the Human Biofield, has a foreword in it that was written by a fellow by the name of Dr. Carl Merritt, very knowledgeable gentleman. And uh, I actually met the very first uh, conference I ever ventured out to in 2011. I met him in person and uh, we became good friends. And he actually went through my master's thesis with me page by page. Um, to make sure that it was all really solid. And then he was in California and I was in Vermont. And he said, how would you like to see if we can do this at a distance? And I had a lot of respect for Carl and I do like experiments. So even though I thought that it was preposterous, I was willing to go along with it. Yeah. And so that very first distance session that I did, uh, we weren't, we didn't have an open line of communication. We weren't on the phone, we weren't on Zoom, we were just intending. So he was laying down on his treatment table in his office in California. And I pretended that he was on my table <clears throat> in Vermont. Now, when somebody lies down in my office and I take a fork and I go through their field, it's like reading the book of your life. And I can, and I've learned to discern this language of vibration very granularly down to extreme details. Um, because it's a consistent language, like what sounds like a breakup in you sounds like a breakup in somebody else, what sounds like a move or a car accident or um, mm. some kind, whatever, it's all the same. And so I went through his whole field and I took notes and I noted the years where he had a lot of turbulence, I noted the organs that weren't quite operating properly, I noticed where he had inflammation, he had a head injury when he was five, all of this, the book of his life, writing down the, the notes. And then we got on the phone I, and I adjusted him too, obviously. I don't just read, but I also adjust, settle down, re release, bring everything to center and focus. It's the mm -hmm. essence of an adjustment. Um, we got on the phone and I went through my notes and he said, Eileen, that's all exactly right. And I feel different, I feel lighter. Uh -huh. And I was like, and he said, and I could feel you working. And I was like, oh my God. I was right. like, I, I was raw. <laughs> I have to eat crow and like go tell everybody that, oh, actually you can do it at a distance. But then I was like, well, how the heck is it working? Right? Like, what's that all about? And so that's where I got into ether and how I found Brendan Murphy was in my 
uh, trying to understand uh, how, how to craft a cosmological story where this was possible. And, and how is this working? So the way that I describe it now is just resonance in the ether. You're an antenna, I'm an antenna, and with intention, we can tune into each other's signal. And that's really like supposedly the idea for wireless communication came from this fact that humans can do this. And we've all had the experience of you think of a friend and then all of a sudden your phone goes beep and it's them messaging you because you caught their vibe. Right, I can I can tell when people are thinking about me. I can feel certain friends on a, a resonance with them. Nobody can argue with that. Everybody's had that experience, and it's exactly that experience that we can tune into each other that allows us to do this work at a distance. It's it's a it's a law of nature, yeah. because I've had countless people been able to replicate this experiment. Countless people. And and read that the map is the same and people experience shifts. In fact, the only way that I really receive biofield tuning is at a distance and it can be incredibly profound. And, you know, you were talking about that Lionsgate mm -hmm. tuning that I did. Did you go through the whole thing? I, I only got to watch about the first 10 minutes of it or so. OK, well, I would definitely recommend to go through the whole thing because it's like a little sonic adventure and it brings you to a different place. And if you bow out halfway, you're going to be half baked. You <laughs> really you want to take it to the end because you'll see like how does it work through zoom well how does us, me listening to a song move me mm -hmm. what? Like, do, do i need to be there for that song mm -hmm. to move me no so even though i recorded that two days ago it's equally moving watching the video of it and that that one actually gives you a really good taste of how it works like you know, the tuning fork's resonating with whatever noise is present and the body's hearing it and responding to it and then things resolve. And so we go through all of these different things that are like dysregulation patterns in people and, and those all regulate. And, and at the end, we come to this place that's like nice and sweet and present and clear and connected and everybody is feeling connected to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole aim of sound healing is to move you from a state of dysregulation to a state of regulation, to a state of, you know, what is it? I was I use dysregulation regulation because I always forget parasympathetic and sympathetic, which okay. one is which. Um, but basically, it you want to be showing up in this moment, fully present, relaxed, aware, with no fussing going on. And then your body can take care of itself when you're right in that state. It's really simple. What? The more you can show up in that state over and over again, the healthier you become. Mm -hmm. Would you be okay if we did a little distant healing at the moment? So I, I, the reason I thought of this is I'm a runner. I, I went for a run a little while ago. My, t my hips are ridiculously tight and slowing me down in my quadriceps. And I just thought it'd be interesting to try that because well, I, you know, I'll use old country term. My, my hips are done stove up. <laughs> how, how old are you? 71. You are not. You're lying to me. Well, 42 years of running marathons, drinking beer, and eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I love eating pizza. And I love drinking beer. Um, you know, I, I follow what I call a practice of moderate hedonism. I've done the spiritual pure thing uh, mm -hmm. where I've given up everything. And it's boring and dull and you can't go out with friends because you're like oh no i can't do that i can't do that i can't do that i like forget about it so you know i like all the poisons all the things and i like to enjoy them in small amounts and so you know i keep myself really good and healthy and my voltage up so that i can enjoy life's pleasures that can be poisons if you yeah. don't manage them properly right, right? Yeah, so my health doctrine is not purity. It's like, just be as electrically strong as you can so you can enjoy whatever you want. Yeah, really? obviously in moderation. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna, and if anybody else who's watching has sore hips or even really a sore any place, I'm gonna direct uh, my listening to Carl's hips and we'll just see what we hear. And Carl, your body is just listening too. You and I don't really have to do anything. What we're gonna do is just watch what happens as your body works with this information, your organizing intelligence. You, our hardware is way beyond in capability 
beyond what the software is that we've been downloaded with, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Our body is way smarter than our conscious mind. Yes. Orders of magnitude. <laughs> so we all know that. Okay, so what I'm seeing when I'm looking at your hips is you have this circle of tension that's in that's just above the pelvis. Um, and that there's there's like this energy that is running through this circle of tension and it, what it's kind of doing is it's sort of rotating your hips in just a little bit, which is making your alignment off. And so the muscles in your hips are having to work harder to try to keep you straight because this band um, is pushing in on you. Is that anything that you've ever felt or feel connected to that a thought? I can't say precisely, no. No, that's fine. I mean, it's subtle. It's like a deep and it's old. It also is reflecting um, a tendency to, uh, a little OCD kind of like, tendency to like, you know, run around in circles, <laughs> like run around. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to keep listening. Yeah, all the muscles on the sides of your hip and even into your psoas are just tight and tense. So in this, I hear this whoa, which is like that tension, and then I hear this whoa, 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 like running around, or you know, even just like what you were describing, tension and pain while running. Like this is what I hear in the signal. Um, And the, the pain signal is starting to tick down to like just a little bit, but I want to use my 144 fork because that one we can like the 174 is good often diagnostically and to kind of start to get into it, but the 144 uh, makes some really funky sounds and can really help the body to open. <laughs> and I got some heat coming up like I'm starting to break a sweat on my forehead and my upper lip. And there's a tightness also that's in the throat. Hmm. It feels to me a little bit like you manage anger, like you hold anger in and you manage anger by running, you know, by, like you, and then there's nothing wrong with that. Like there's, there, there, but there's hot emotions here mm -hmm. um, r rather than wet emotions. Right. And it, this is a, there's um, just like a, uh, the jaw and hips are completely related. So mm. I'm feeling the tension that's in the jaw too and how that's balancing against what's going on in the hips. What are you noticing? Do you feel anything, Carl? What's interesting, you said I felt, I feel the heat too. Yeah, the heat. I was gonna ask if you felt the heat. Definitely, yeah, I noticed yeah. it. It's really weird. Like sometimes when I'm doing a session or a group session, I'll just I'll be in a room that's 72 degrees and I will come out in a full sweat because I've just gotten into a pocket of heat. It's really strange. I, I just felt a, a vibration in my hips, almost like they're loosening up a little bit. Yeah. So I'm having to breathe, right? Because I'm feeling kind of this energy. It's making me hold my breath. So I take these kind of discharge breaths so that I'm not holding your vibe. Yeah, so something's starting to like ratchet down a little. Hmm. I 
and I'm feeling like the throat and jaw wants to open. And then there's more light coming into your system. So as we release light that's been trapped in tension and allow it to go back into flow, you start to feel lighter. This is what everybody says. My husband's like, can you come up with a more scientific description for how people feel? I'm like, people feel lighter and it's cumulative. And everyone you receive, you get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Like I feel light as a feather, but I'm really grounded at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that that's the cumulative effect of it. So I want you to invite to bring your breath like all the way down to the pelvic floor. And as you bring your breath down there, just notice any place on the way down where you feel restricted or closed or inverted or collapsed. And then just let the sound go in and help open, brighten, lift, release, relax. And sometimes when I'm working, I start to shake or wiggle. And that's part of just me being mm -hmm. for two. You know, how we get rid of patterns is through shaking them off. Everything is just a pattern. That's this is a pattern of tension. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's got pain anywhere, really, this can be going in and helping to open whatever is closed. Doesn't have to be in the pelvis. Have you ever uh, clenched or grinded your teeth at night? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. At least my dentist tells me I probably do that at night when he looks at my teeth. Oh, they look like you've been grinding your teeth. Yeah, I can feel that. So there's a particular vibration of teeth grinding, and that is usually a consequence of anger we felt in childhood but weren't allowed to express. Mm. And so it comes out subconsciously at night as adults that anger is mm. cycling in your system, but you're not allowed to express it. So you're like, oh, that's going on, right? And mm. so there's some of that tension in the mouth also in the in the hips. So this is just reflecting back to your body that it has these rhythms going on. It's holding up a mirror, it's holding up a metronome and the body's going, oh, okay, that, that, that. Okay, I'll work with that input. Okay, good. So it feels like still like there's a little bit more tension in the right hip than the left. Um, there's something kind of just really stuck right there. Um, the right hip in the biofield anatomy is a tendency for like guilt driven overdoing or an inner critic, mm. uh, you know, self judgment. Uh, would you say that that's something that happens in your inner landscape? Well, I'm, I'm sure, you know, one thing I've really worked on is, is releasing judgment, but maybe I do it with other things and not so much with myself. True, that's possible. Or if it was a very strong pattern for a long time before mm -hmm. you learned that it was a bad idea, it's mm -hmm. still the record of that intensity and duration of that pattern is still present in your experience of yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in this moment, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm avoiding that. But you might have spent decades <laughs> doing it, right? And so that pattern uh, is still expressing in your in your biofield. Um, but let's just do a few more strikes because I feel like we're almost there. Good. So what are you noticing? I've got another fork here that I'm going to use as well to finish. But before we go to that one, just tell me what you're noticing. Well, it, I may be wrong, but it, it, it uh, at first when you hit the fork, uh, there sound like there was almost some pulsations or interruptions in the vibration. But the more you did it, it seemed to be more consistent and clear. Yeah, that's right. That's what happened. So res 
resonance and entrainment. It initially resonates with the distortion, but then entrains it into a more coherent expression. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of the body. That is your body doing that on its own, not your conscious mind, right? And I'm not really intending anything other than to just listen to see what's happening. You know, I'm just a technician kind of like, here's the signal. And then once your signal kind of matches that signal, then we move on to the next one. <laughs> That's what sort of what happens here. Um, so this one, the 528 is, is a brighter sound um, and it tends to go in and open up places that the other ones don't. So we'll just do a few with this. Isn't that the solfeggio tone, 520? Yeah, this is a solfeggio tone. Yeah. Okay, that's the last one. I'm going to let it ring out. Mm. Good. All right. What do you notice, Carl? With that one specifically, I, I, it really created a sense of peace. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. Wow. wow. This is really interesting. You're in Vermont. I'm in Ohio, and we're doing this at a distance yeah, yeah. and it works and, and it works i mean it's pretty i mean it's really simple like you don't it doesn't matter that it's at a distance because you're receiving this information but how, i mean after i did that first one on carl i i started doing more of them but in the beginning i didn't have an open line of communication so their body was not responding to what it was hearing mm -hmm. it was responding to what I was broadcasting and they were receiving through the ether and without having a body on the table to ask, like, did you go through a breakup when you were 17? That was really kind of formative and kind of like, or were you in a car accident when you were 29? Like without people there to ask, I had to listen even deeper to understand the information that was present that I was working with. And people, even though, you know, I, we, they weren't hearing it when I would go through my notes, they would report a, that everything I was saying was right on and B that they felt different now. So, um, so this works, you know, and if it works and it works consistently, it has to be a law of nature, even though we're told that it's not, you know, so much of what we're told, and certainly this is the same boat that Brendan and I are in, and I would imagine you are as well. I don't believe a single thing I'm told by the powers of be. Not anything, not about history, not about science, not about medicine, not about any of it. It's all upside down and backwards. And that's really the game here, I think. It's like it's upside down backwards world of war. Like, how are you going to navigate this, figure out what the truth is, figure out how to be healthy and figure out how to live peaceably right? in the in the simulation Earth game? So like you were saying at the beginning, like we shouldn't take it so seriously. It's right. really important that we remember that it's kind of a game and that, you know, that. And so what I feel is that discovering plasma discovering ether gave me a cosmology with two additional states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and ether. And it's through my understanding and my working with the hidden uh, elements that I solved all my problems. Nice. So they're, and not only are they hidden, but they're connective. Like it's all one light. The plasma is all one light. You can't divide light right and and so the ether is the one that all, all the many arise from so it's these connective light filled states of matter that when you figure them out and you start to use them when you add them to your toolkit you suddenly have way more uh an advantage in the game if you will and you can move through levels a lot faster when you add these into your little toolbox well, this has been an absolutely amazing. Uh, we've been talking to Eileen Day McCusick, and what a phenomenal, phenomenal discussion. I, I haven't even touched on a lot of other questions I have. It's been over an hour. I know you've got a lot of things to do. I have to tell you, when you uh, when we just did the little uh, distant healing, the first uh, 
tuning fork. I have external computer speakers here. My cat, Maya, jumped right up to the speakers and was looking, what is that sound? She was fascinated by that tone. Yes, and that's something we hear a lot. Cats and, and pets love tuning. They'll often stay in a room when the tuning is going on. Uh, we work on pets at a distance. Um, I have, People have sent me pictures of like their cat and dog looking all zen in front of the screen while I'm there, like waving forks around. That They really, they sense it. And uh, benefit from it. Well, I, I don't know if there's a quick answer to this. I have one one quick more question because I really wanted to discuss plasma. But I mean, if there's a short answer, to this. so is plasma the connectivity tissue within the electromagnetic field of the divine, divine matrix? <laughs> is that a quick <laughs> explanation? Uh, well, basically, plasma is the flow of electric current. It's a flow of electric current. So our biofield is a bioplasma because electric current is flowing in it, right? It's biological current. Um, the Earth's atmosphere is a plasma. It, 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 we know that there's charge in the atmosphere. When you go to the ocean and you breathe ionized air, what are you doing? You're breathing in electricity. Yeah. Right? And that is feeding your electric body. We can go for months without food, days without liquids. You can't go very long without breath because breath is your number one source of life and life is electric. It is this flow of electric current that determines whether something is alive or dead. So the sun is a plasma, the solar wind is a plasma, northern lights are a plasma, electricity, lightning, lightning bugs, it's all um, the flow of electric current. So that's what plasma is. And it's different densities. When it's really dense, it's like a lightning strike or a plasma welder. When it's really diffuse, it's just the atmosphere that we're in. Wow, there's so much to contemplate and think about here. That is that is just phenomenal. Uh, Eileen, um, tell us about um, the people you train around the world with your your biofield. Um, um, I forget what the organization is called. Uh, you you okay. actually train people around the world. Yeah, we do. So before 2020, we were uh, flying teachers around the world, teaching classes. Obviously, March 2020 caused us to pivot and create an online program. And honestly, I didn't think it was possible. Just like I didn't think distance teaching is possible, I didn't think teaching it virtually is possible. Um, my team discovered that it is, and we're turning out students that are probably even better than what we did in person. Um, unfortunately, it's a very popular program. As soon as we list classes, they sell out. So if anybody's interested in becoming a practitioner, and it, and it makes a wonderful addition to pretty much any other practice, like anything that you do as a wellness provider, if you add tuning forks and biofield tuning in the mix, it just levels it up. You know, it blends really well with chiropractic, with counseling, with coaching, with massage, with Reiki, what, what have you. Um, we have a gynecologist nurse who's using our scar technique on C-sections and episiotomies. <laughs> it's like there's, there's really a lot of ways to bring this in to your practice. Um, and we have, as a consequence, we have practitioners all over the world. So our website, biofieldtuning.com has a find a practitioner. And you know, because you can do it at a distance, you don't have to find somebody near you. Um, you know, but if you want to look and see if there is anybody nearby and um, you know, have the experience of it. I did that yesterday. Actually, I, I actually connected to one of your um, your people you certified already, and where I think I'm going to do either drive over to her place. She's a couple, about 150 miles away, but uh, or do one by distance. So yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. But yeah, you know, this is just awesome. I, I'm sure uh, if people want to connect to you, they can just go to your. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Biofield. Biofieldtraining.com. I've only been looking at the website for days. Why would I know that? So, but thank you, Eileen. Uh, this has been phenomenal. I'm so grateful. I, I've learned so much today and so much to think about. Now I'm going to go out and run with with loose hips. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, excellent. Well, my pleasure, Carl. Thanks for having me.
This has been another episode of World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with host Carl Gruber, a certified law of attraction life coach. We welcome you to tune in to each and every episode of World Awakenings as we open your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to the truth of all things spiritual, metaphysical, and enlightening, and just how much they play an all-important role in our moment-to-moment daily life. Much love and light to you, my friend, and thank you for tuning in to World Awakenings. Thank you.